Hello, my name's Dr. Ed Hope and welcome to Sick Notes where I explain medical things in simple terms. But today, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Well, should I say tonight because I'm on a night shift and I thought you might like to join me on a night shift in the emergency department. So I'm gonna do a little report before the shift, during the shift and after the shift. For those who don't know about the NHS, so the National Health Service in the UK, it's under a lot of pressure at the moment due to a massive underfunding, particularly of things like mental health services and social care. And that's no more evident than in the emergency department where there's often long waits and stretched care. You may have heard of reports in the UK of ambulances queuing outside because they're unable to transfer patients from the ambulance to A&E. Now, this isn't something that happens overnight. This is because we can't discharge patients from hospital so the social care is not in place then patients can't go home and after a few days this will back up and eventually hit a and e so as soon as this happens the problem's already been created so it's not something that we can fix straight away so just a warning really that we may encounter some of these issues on the shift so some long wait times and even ambulances queuing outside which obviously isn't very good for anyone so before the shift now i just like to take things easy a bit i've tried to sleep as much as i can this morning i'm pretty <laughs> generally pretty good at that i've had a little walk into town and had a very generous lunch um, all to try and put me in a good frame of mind so I can put the best of myself forward uh, for tonight's shift. Anyway, I'm gonna take the rest of the day easy. Um, I've got some study to do because I'm also a teaching fellow, so I have to do some uh, book work for that as well. So I'm gonna do that, have a nice low key day, listen to some music, and then I'll check in with you as I'm about to start the shift. Okay, so I'm about to head in for the 10 hour A&E night shift. I try and put now, put everything out of my head. So whatever's going on in your life, you just have to leave it to one side because you've got a much more important job to do at the moment. You need to be in the moment, you need to be focused so you can do a good job for everyone you see. We talked earlier about the pressures in the healthcare system and this creates a kind of pressure cooker within the hospital and can often mean stress levels are very high. So one of the other things, as well as just putting everything out of my mind, I always try and be as helpful and understanding as possible with my colleagues because you don't know what kind of shift they've had. So they may have just come from a really traumatic incident or they may have had somebody shout at them and you know they might not quite be their self and instead of sort of snapping back you need to make sure everyone you see you're very kind to very understanding and hopefully that will reciprocate so people will be nicer to you if you're having a particular tough time so being kind and understanding is most important when we're dealing with patients and family because i'm in a and e a lot so each particular moment I'm not going to remember but for people when they come into hospital in an unfamiliar environment often having to deal with high anxiety levels and not knowing what's going on these are moments that will be burned into their memory forever whether good or bad so we need to make sure that not only we're giving excellent medical care but part of that is that we're understanding you know if people need to talk about things we make the time for them you know even just offering friends and family if there's anything else they need pointing to them in the direction of the drinks trolley. You know, that's not just about the drinks, it's basically saying I'm thinking of you as well. Okay, so I'm all set. I've got my ID, my stethoscope, my glasses, because when I get tired, I don't see so good. Pen and mobile phone, although we're not really supposed to have a mobile phone, but then they put all our hospital guidelines on the mobile phone, so work that one out. Um, I'll catch up with you on my lunch break and give you, well, lunch break, midnight feast, shall we say, and give you an update on how things are going. The time is 3.30 and I'm having my half an hour break. It's been pretty full on down in A&E, one of the busiest I've seen in a long time. Um, it's good though that people are very protective of your break, so you always get that sort of half an hour. When I worked on medical or surgical takes before, you often don't get that. Um, time to have that break so you can often be running around without eating or without going to the toilet for like 12 13 hours so they're even longer than the a &E shift as well as not necessarily getting your breaks i don't tend to get too hungry on a night shift actually just gonna work my way through some power fruits uh, basically they've been in a &E minus tonight so in our department there are basically four main areas so a &E peds is anyone who's under 16 a &E majors, which is actually where I prefer to be, um, is people with, you know, often come in for an ambulance and need sort of urgent attention. So I think people 
who have had things like heart attacks, strokes, who have had falls, um, people with infections who may be septic and need resuscitation, lots of people who have taken overdoses, things like that. And then you have a &E resus, so they're the people who need constant monitoring and you know, aggressive resuscitation, the ones that are really at risk of deteriorating. Then you have where I've been, which is a &E minor, so you get everyone walking in or people that the ambulance feel like could, you know, wait in a waiting room to be seen. It's been really, really busy. We've seen, it's, people have been saying it's the busiest we've had for a while. Um, the waits have constantly been over four or five hours. So to put that in perspective, we're supposed to see, treat and have a plan, i.e. discharge patients or move them on to another specialty within four hours. So if we're not even seeing them within four hours, we're never going to make that target. Obviously, people are getting very frustrated and tensions end up running high, like what I talked about at the beginning of the shift. Also, every shift tends to have a kind of sort of pattern to it. <laughs> Today has been really a lot of mental health issues I've seen. Funny that I ended up talking about it at the very beginning. I've seen so many people with deliberate self-harm overdoses. It just goes to show and that's just in my tiny hospital in the UK. Imagine that, you know, across all the hospitals and also, you know, there's going to be loads of, for everyone that goes to hospital, there must be thousands of people that are having these ideas in their head and feel so low that they feel like they need to do those things. It's such a huge problem and this is not where we should be dealing with it. You know, just thinking about the UK government and their underfunding of the mental health services, that doesn't show a lot of compassion either. And, you know, we're not the best people to deal with it in A&E. I don't know how to deal with it. You know, effectively, we need mental health nurses, people who are trained, people that can give support in the community. Um, you know, prevention is better than the cure for these things. But it's just getting underfunded at the moment. And, yeah, these people deserve better. Anyway, I'm on the home straight now. Just a couple of hours left. So I can redouble my efforts and, yeah, try and do a good job for the rest of the shift. I'll check in with you guys um, when I'm done. Cool. All right, so it is 6.30 and I've finished the night shift. I wonder if you can tell how different I look before and after and also maybe in the way I'm delivering this. I'm probably slightly all over the place at the moment. I feel like, I always feel after a night shift like I'm hung over, you know, that feeling of just a little bit jaded, you don't fight quite fit in your own body. I think that's sort of partly due to you realise how much of a hangover is due to lack of sleep, really. You know, the alcohol having an impact on lack of sleep, and that's basically what I'm suffering from at the moment. Overall, it was a good shift, although, you know, it wasn't totally satisfying. You know, having four or five hour waits, when you see patients, that's not a good patient experience for a start. I mean, we kind of work at the same rate. You know, we can't really work quicker because you don't want to make care worse so there's a rate you work at and it's always a lot better when you know there's just an hour wait even if you're working at the same intensity it just means the patients have a better experience overall so a lot of the people i saw tonight they weren't very straightforward things well certainly from my very sort of junior experience more senior people would probably found it a very straightforward shift and that doesn't make it quite as satisfying as well although i do like learning things often you also like to do a good job and like to be seen that you know exactly what's going on and put in good plans. By far the most hardest job in medicine. If you were going to have one sort of special skill in medicine, it would be knowing who's ill and who isn't ill. It sounds a bit ridiculous. So when you have patients where you don't quite know what's going on, it doesn't fill you with great reassurance and you can often worry, ah, oh, did you know, I sent that patient home, is that the best thing to do? Or I admitted that patient, was that unnecessary? And you sort of have these doubts. I think that's why I much prefer working in A&E majors, where it's kind of almost a given that the patient's gonna stay in hospital. So it becomes much more about starting treatment and then figuring out a diagnosis and then who they're gonna refer on to. So you're kind of avoiding the big question, that the big complicated question that I talked about. It's like, are they actually ill? Do they need to be in hospital? That's kind of why I feel like 
GP for me would be the hardest job to do. And a lot of people think that, hang on, surely GPs, family doctors, they're the easy ones, but not at all. They're like the kind of gatekeepers to the medical system. And, you know, they need to be able to spot that patient that isn't well out of all those other people and be confident with sending the other people away. In A&E, we're quite lucky because we often get to do lots of tests. So even with all those tests tonight, I still wasn't totally sure with you know the management plans I had. Obviously, I run them by the senior and then we came to an agreement, but you don't get that satisfaction that that's, you know, you've done exactly the right thing because there's a certain amount of unknown, isn't it? We can reassure people on a particular moment as they come in, but we don't know what's gonna happen in future. So you have to give good safety net in advice and have good judgment as well to know that those people are sort of sensible enough to come back in hospital if they need to. Overall though, a big list of things for me to go back and reflect over. So I hope you enjoyed following me on my shift in the emergency department. I'm gonna have five to six hours sleep and then get up and do it all again. So, <laughs> um, but I won't, you know, you don't have to come with me next time. But thank you very much for watching anyway. Uh, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the comments and the likes and the shares. Things have, you know, come a long way since I first started and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Yeah.